up, we had a third place winner for group exhibit, Jaden Garbert, Olivia Cobb, and Elena Delusia Barnum. <coughs> Exhibit on sign language in Martha's Vineyard and how it evolved into the modern day sign language. Uh, next, Farrah Reader. Farrah and her group took second place for group exhibit. Uh, they did one on Ruth Foster. He was the founder of the Negro Leagues, uh, Negro League Baseball. Next, Trinity Alexander, second place individual website. John Brown, the abolitionist, and how even after he was executed uh, for treason uh, following his raid on Harper's Ferry, he helped influence the election of 1860 and seeing Abraham Lincoln become president. <laughs> Second place individual documentary, Logan Martin. I do want to mention that Logan, uh, even though he finished second place at the regional competition, he did end up being a state finalist uh, in Pennsylvania. So he was, uh, project was on the Johnstown flood and how it influenced Andrew Carnegie to enter the realm of philanthropy, which he became very famous for, of course. <laughs> website category, Carter Stasha and Nick Rita. They also were state finalists, uh, finishing in sixth place in the state of Pennsylvania. Competition. We'll start with Alex Chauvin and Jacob Klein. <laughs> primarily on the Braddock and Ford's expeditions. We'll move on next to Vino Chris. Vino did an individual performance on Wilma Rudolph, uh, also a state finalist, and took third place in the state of Pennsylvania. Next, uh, for group performance, taking first place in the regional competition, Sarah Ruschak, Riley Habel, and Sienna Leonard. <laughs> These ladies did a project on the Secret Six. This was George Washington's spy organization in New York City during the American Revolution. And last but not least, uh, this next group won first place at the regional competition and will be representing Bell Vernon at the national competition in Washington, D.C. next month. State champions in the group website category, Jessica Phillips, Lindsay Nagy, Kylie Stanger, Sophia Francia, and Emma Schrader. was on the 1845 Pittsburgh Fire. It's an excellent program. Look how many we had recognized tonight. So let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Next, I'm going to ask Dr. Stepko to come up to recognize our STEM competition winners from Marion Elementary. Tonight, um, I would like to recognize our STEM teams. On April 3rd, Mrs. Ambrose's fifth and sixth grade STEM teams competed against 12 other Westmoreland County schools in a STEM design challenge. This year, the students were to use connects to create an eco friendly crane that could pick up an object, move it six or more inches, and then place it back down. The fifth grade team placed third in their division with their Mother Nature's Minion Crane. Yes, it had minions on it. The crane was able to pick up objects and actually move them 360 degrees, and it was powered by solar and wind energy. And our team members, if they're here tonight, please come up. Lila Teets, Grace Ruschak, Brian Goodboy, and Akila and Jenny. I was the 
Principal Marion to go see. I went every year, so I didn't get to go this year, but congratulations. It's tough competition, I'm telling you. It's amazing what these kids can do. So good job. Thank you. And uh, now is the time that uh, if you do not wish to stay for the meeting, if you came for the recognition, parents and students, and you do not wish to stay for the regular meeting, now is the time that you are excused and can go ahead and leave. Thank you for being here. Okay, next you'll see it says approval of agenda for this meeting, but uh, we have, have changed our format since we now do the agenda meeting along with our workshops, so the agenda has already been approved. That moves us to comments from citizens relative to the agenda only, and I want to set ground rules not only for, for this portion of the comments, but also for the comments at the end of the meeting. Since we have a large crowd here tonight, and uh, I'm anticipating we're going to have quite a few people that wish to comment. We're going to limit it to three minutes with the comments, and we're going to ask that you please come forward to the microphone, state your name, and then do your address from there, because if Tony Joe Konka, our secretary, takes all the notes, and she wants to be able to hear what is said, and if you just speak up from back there, oftentimes she cannot hear. So we're asking you, if you're going to speak, come forward, state your name, where you're from, and hold your comments to three minutes, and that would be for both the first part, the, the comment from citizens relative to the agenda only, and then the comments from citizens at the end, and we are going to ask that you only speak once. So you can come up, say your piece for the three minutes, and then sit down and let someone else have the opportunity, because as I said, I think tonight we're going to have a few people that wish to comment. And at this point, I want our solicitor, Mr. Vic Kustra, to uh, speak as well. Uh, in anticipation of, of comment uh, regarding the recent student discipline incident that we've had here at the district, I've advised the school board uh, to not respond to any of those types of comments. Uh, the purpose of that is not to withhold information from the public. Um, the purpose of that is to protect the school board uh, the district and its ability to discipline students. As, as some of you may be aware, there is now uh, ongoing litigation regarding that, that incident. Uh, so in order to protect the district, I've advised the board to not respond to any of those comments. Thank you. At this time, we will open up the floor to comments from citizens relative to the agenda only. Uh, those of you that are new here, what I usually do is I start at one end and I work my way across. If you wish to speak, raise your hand. We'll call you up. If you don't wish to speak, just sit there and I'll work my way all the way over. So, having said that, at this time, if you have a comment, relative to the agenda only, and that means specifically to tonight's agenda. I'll start over here. Just raise your hand if you would like to speak. I 
didn't get there yet, John. Yes, Mr. Hable, come forward. Well, I, I just didn't want you to jump the gun there. Hey, I was at the agenda setting meeting, and this is not the agenda we set at the meeting. There's at least five additions and two or three subtractions. Are we planning on amending the agenda at some point? I said I was at the agenda setting meeting, and uh, some things are now on the agenda that weren't on the agenda at the agenda setting meeting, and I asked if we're going to amend the agenda. For example, cutting of trees, Carrie Worrell's resignation, um, this documentation for appeal of court orders wasn't on that agenda as well. We, well, they took out the student separation agreement. Uh, 1.6 was removed from the agenda. Are you planning on amending the agenda? Uh, actually, that is a good point. Uh, we did have some changes that came last minute, and that's far for the course. Oftentimes, especially when you have seven days in between sure. meetings, you right. will have those. And that's a good point. Thank you very much. So at this point, while you're standing there, sure. uh, I will accept a motion to amend the agenda as it has been written. Director White, could you have a second? Director Livingood, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda has been amended and approved. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Hill. Uh, proposal removal of trees on school property. We're selling that property at the end of this month. Is there a reason we're paying for it, if not the new owners? The problem is, is that it's currently still our property and this tree is in danger of falling onto someone else's property and they brought it to our attention and, and we've tried to get someone out there to take care of us. It's taken us a while, but it is our responsibility right now. Is it safe to assume that Director Engstrom will be abstaining from that vote? Uh, from the tree removal? Yes, since he has a relationship with the property purchaser. That has nothing to do. This is uh, this is currently our property, and we, as a school district, have to take care of that tree, just like the one that's that's on Comanche Road. So this has nothing to do with the sale. This is something that is our property now, and we have to take care of it. So we're anticipating the tree to fall. Correct. Now, the end of the month. Correct. It has been an it, this has been an ongoing issue with trying to get someone out there to get this taken care of. Any. Comment on the reason Terry Horrell is stepping down as varsity cheerleading coach? We received her letter today. Thank you. All right, we get to that point. I'll continue to work my way across the room. Yes, please come up, state your name and uh, where you're from. Thank you. You need to drop that down. Hi, I'm Trisha Solowski. Do you my address or just my? Just Borough Township. Ross River Township. Okay. I'm just, I know that you're not allowed to respond, but I would just like to ask a question. How a certain board member can continue to remain on the board, which you obviously does not agree with the disciplinary policy. You can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry. I just wanted to ask, since we're not allowed to respond, how a current board member can remain on the board when she obviously does not um, That's, just, in the at, at policy? This, at this point, I will say this, that's not part of, that, that is not relative to the agenda. That comment, if you wish to make it, can be made at the end of the meeting when we have open comments from citizens. Okay, I'll be back. Thank you. <laughs> okay, continuing on. And, and I, I just want to remind everybody, we, we have this set up for a reason. First part of the comments are for the agenda so that people can address what's taking part in the agenda. Then at the end of the meeting, we have the open comments. So I'm not trying to cause a problem, but this is what we follow all the time. So you will have your chance to say your speech. Okay, anybody else? Relative to the agenda. 
All right, if there's no one else that has anything relative to the agenda, we will close the comments at this time. Dr. Dow, communications, please. Oh, wait, we have to approve the minutes for the work session meeting of April 9th, 2019, and the regular meeting minutes for April 15th, 2019. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Director Grata. Second. Second, Director Kovach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now, Dr. Dow, communications. Communications, information only. You can hear me. Okay, uh, monthly departmental reports. We have A through H. Communications information only. We have the WIU superintendent's meeting minutes from April 11th, 2019. We have the CWCTC work session and meeting minutes from April 17th, 2019. We have Edward F. Conco Jr. Disabled Veterans Real Property Tax Exemption Certification. And we have Howard C. Laverick Disabled Veterans Real Property Tax Exemption Certification. Those are all for information only. Next, we have communications board action required. We have 1.1 to 1.13. We have the CWCTC proposed budget for 2019-20. Okay. I don't have to read all of them. You have them in front of you. Um, are you going to do these all in one session? Yes, we will do this as a consent agenda. Unless someone, I, I will ask, is there anybody here who plans on opposing a vote on any of these items? Because we'll have to do that as a roll call. Anyone? What, which ones are we talking about? 1.1 through 1.13, Mr. Director Kovach. Yes, I plan on voting no on 1.10. All right. Okay, so we will do, let's start with 1.1 through 1.9 for a consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve items 1.1 through 1.9? So moved. Director Angstrom, do I have a second? Second. Director Ushak, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry unanimously. Now, 1.10. That is the change to the sports eligibility criteria. This will have to be a roll call vote. Director Calloway Rodriguez, would you please pull the board? We need a motion? Okay, that's right, we do need a motion. Thank you, Director Grant. I was getting ahead of myself here. I'll move. Director Grant makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Director Angstrom. All right, roll call vote, please, Director. Question. I would like uh, you know, uh, the superintendent to explain the discussion we had and some of the reasoning behind the proposal so that there's a clear understanding why we're doing what we intend to do. So um, our athletic director, Matt Humbert, came to me to talk about our eligibility criteria for sports. And I asked him, one of the things I do is I question a lot, so I asked him to do some research on are we Comparable to other districts, where are we? So he actually polled quite a few districts. And our criteria right now as it is, is that students must be passing 6.5 credits. Well, the PIAA rules are passing four full-time credits. There is no one else that we found that has as high of an eligibility requirement as we do. So we did not want to go down all the way to just four full-time credits. So we looked, there were five other districts that he had polled that did something that was kind of what we called a compromise between the two. And that is where we came up with recommending that they cannot be failing two classes um, and must be passing four full-time credits to be eligible to, to do sports. Because one of the things we were finding is some kids may be um, they may have an elective if they only have seven credits, and if they're not passing that elective, they're not eligible to play sports. So this is our recommendation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dow. Is that sufficient, Director Brennan? All right, then let's move forward with the vote, please. Director Waco? Yes. Director Ishak? Yes. Director Ringstrom? Yes. Excuse me, Director Calais Rodriguez, yes. Director Ford? Yes. Director Grata? Yes. Director Livingwood? Yes. Director Rood? Yes. Director Kovach? No, and I'd like to clarify my no vote. While I respect yes. all the benchmarking analysis that everyone's done within the district, 
we do have an attendance problem for our students. And I feel going to the PIA minimum with four uh, credits, along with being able to fell two classes, I just don't think, uh, I, I just believe we're setting the bar a little bit too low for our student athletes. And I really just want to make sure that they are remain student athletes and not just athletes. So again, I do respect, I do believe we needed to take action. In the, in the business meeting, I made the case to have five credits and be able to uh, fell two classes. So I thought that was more appropriate. Thank you. Well, I, I agree with the spirit and the uh, intent of Director Kovacs' uh, concern here. I also think it's important that we uh, maintain parity with just about every school district in western Pennsylvania. And even at that, we're still a step above. So uh, hopefully we won't have an issue with this, but it's something that we uh, apparently have needed to address for some time to remain competitive and to achieve parity. And, and I want to point out, if I remember correctly, from the facts that were presented, uh, our new guidelines will fall in line with, what, six other school districts, five, the yes. five other school districts. So we would be number six that still have elevated eligibility compared to the rest of the schools in the WPIL. So having said that, we will now look at I items. I have a question, Mr. Yes, go ahead, Director Wanko. Do we take attendance into the there is a component to the, the PIAA requirements as far as being able to participate. And I'm going to quote this wrong, I think, but if you miss more than 20 days in a school year, you can be held ineligible for the entire year. So there are requirements. And if, you're, if you miss 20 days the prior semester, to right. like, like in the spring if you're a semester, player, right. and you're coming into the fall, uh, you will be ineligible until such time a certain amount of days pass. I'm not sure what the exact is. Director Director Humber would know, but I do remember that from my days as a coach. So there there are attendance components that are a part of this as well. Plus, you must be in attendance the day of a, a contest for at least half a day as well. Okay. Can we move ahead now? Is everybody okay? All right. We now need to do 1.11 through 1.13. As long as no one's going to vote no, we can do that as a consent agenda. Can I have a motion to approve those items? Yeah. Director Ushak, do I have a second? Yeah. Director Fort, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry unanimously. Dr. Dowd. 2.0 tuition, graduate tuition reimbursement for BBAEA, and graduate tuition reimbursement for Act 93 contract agreement. Do I have a motion to approve the tuition? Reimbursements. So moved. Director Engstrom. Second. I have a second. 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 Director Livingood. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Dow. 3.0. Other permission for Dave Shada to scrap a 2016 Chevy Uplander. Six, 2006. I did that last you time. You did I that the last time. Too. last time. It's 2006. I apologize. I just wanted to clarify that, yes. because if we're scrapping in 2016, I can see people might be upset about that. Um, 3.2 is uh, board authorized budget transfer funds. This is reclassifying information based on our recommendations from our audit. And uh, just to clarify for everyone so that there's no questions, uh, Mr. Dorizzo, our business manager, would you please just give a brief explanation as to why things have to be done this way? Yeah, basically the way we budgeted in the past, uh, we wanted to keep um, the expenses. These are lease payments. We wanted to keep it in the departments um, that benefit from them. Um, the first two are in the technology department. The next two are in the maintenance department. And uh, the 2700, that's the bus leases. So we classify those as equipment expenses because they were leases to purchase equipment. Uh, based on our, the audit recommendation from our audit last year, um, our auditor suggested that we classify those as principal and interest for leases. It's, it's just a PDE reporting thing. Um, you know, we're just reclassifying it from one area to the next. We're not adding any expenses to the budget. All right, any other questions? In that case, I'll entertain a motion to approve 3.1 and 3.2. So moved. Director Kovach, second. second. Director Whiteco, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
facilities usage requests we had none this month. Um, financial reports A through J. I have a motion to accept the financial reports A through J. Mm -hmm. Director Grata, second. Second. Director Ushak, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. New business, uh, documentation to appeal the court order, the order of court case number 2299 of 2019. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Director Grata, second by Director Kovach. Do I need to do this as a roll call? No? All those in favor? We have a one abstention, that's why I said we need to have it as a roll call. Can you please do this as a roll call, Director Calavera Rodriguez? Director Moyko? Yes. Director Ushak? Yes. Director Ringstrom? Yes. Director Calvary Rodriguez? Yes. Director Fort? Yes. You have to Director Rada? Yes. You have to abstain. That's the appeal court order. You have to abstain that one. Okay. So you abstain. Director Livingwood? Yes. Director Rude? Yes. Director Kovach? Yes. Motion carries 8-0 with one abstention. Dr. Dahl. Employment of personnel. We have subs. We have an FMLA leave. We have a leave. We have summer maintenance student workers. We have resignations. We have retirement resignation. And we have coaches. No. You can do one through three. We can do one through three and then uh, five through Correct. seven. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. All right. Do I have a motion to accept or to approve numbers one, two, and three? So moved. Director Living Good. Second. Second, Director Angstrom. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry unanimously. Now, number four, summer maintenance student workers. We're going to have another abstention here. Therefore, we need a roll call vote. Please, Director Calvin Rodriguez. Director Whitecoat. Yes. Director Ishak. Yes. Director Ringstrom. Yes. Director Calvin Rodriguez. Yes. Director Ford. I have to abstain from this vote. I yeah. have a child that's up for the summer employment. Director Rada. Yes. Director Livingwood. Yes. Director Yes. Director Yes. Motion carries 8-0 with one abstention. I will entertain a motion at this time to accept 5, 6, and 7 resignations, retirement resignations, and hiring of new coaches. So moved. Director Kovach, shall I have a second? Second. Director Whiteco, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Dahl. Our committee reports, Facilities, Grounds, Transportation Committee, Mrs. Chairman Whiteco. We had a walkthrough on May 7th of the Ross Draper, old, former Ross Draper Middle School. Again, trying to determine the best use, what uses, and the cost. And then on the bus, um, bus department, um, Mr. Bichetta, notified me that the state police are doing inspections July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Thank you. Athletics and Activities Committee, Mr. Grata. Uh, yes, uh, we have the reorganized uh, Athletics Committee, which I chair, and I have a little bit of a lengthy report. Of course, we have the two resignations, uh, Hicksy Darrell Hickson Ball and Carrie Oral. Uh, that would be boys varsity baseball and cheerleading, respectively. We are working on reviving and uh, injecting new life into the wrestling program. We had a very successful senior awards banquet. We've had uh, our spring sports, and we've had a lot of uh, you know success there with the baseball team advancing to the uh, first round, which uh, unfortunately lost there. And in track and field, we had a lot of surprises, even though this is a school district without a track and field facility. We nevertheless had uh, some uh, great performances by Hunter Martin in the hurdles, Casey Waitman in javelin, uh, Cindy Basiak in high jump, 
Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, oh, Hannah uh, sighting her in the uh, 800 meters, I believe. But the thing that I would like to say most of all that I think all of us appreciate from this month's athletic report is this. On Saturday, May 4th, 18 student athletes represented BBA at the Special Olympics track and field event at Norman High School. <clears throat> BBA athletes participated in three events throughout the morning. They ran track, threw softballs and javelin, and jumped during various field events. Our BBA athletes were cheered on by more than 20 BBA volunteers, including teachers, staff, students, friends, and family. Collectively, the BBA athletes brought out more than 30 gold medals and a variety of silver and bronze. Congratulations to them, and thanks to staff, families, students, and volunteers. Thank you. All right, Governance, Finances, Operations Committee. Uh, no report at this time. Human Resources Committee. We have a meeting on April the 29th. Uh, everybody seems to have uh, put everything together to close the year with their comments and uh, phrases. And I this one. And one of the issues, and one of, one of the uh, members said that they really appreciate the time that we give to them to come before the board and come before the administration just to be able to have the opportunity to air any problems that there are and any positive things that they want to uh, bring up. So uh, it's, a, it's a good meeting. Human Resources Committee is a good meeting to just share problems and uh, praises. Thank you. All right, thank you. Curriculum Technology and Arts Committee. Let me just say, there's been a lot of really good things going on. I don't have time to highlight all of them, but I want to pick a few from each of the schools. Uh, Ryan Merrick recently passed his Unmanned Aircraft General Operators License Exam at Pittsburgh Institute for Aeronautics. That is code for drones. Uh, that is not an easy credential to earn, so congratulations to Ryan. The Project Lead the Way. Yep. The Project Lead the Way Engineering Design Development course, there was a group of four students, Jordan French, Luke Long, Nathan Lynch, and Jarrett Mosco partic participated in a robotics competition called Box IQ, and that's a manufacturing workforce development program. The Smart Sport is designed to provide high school students with an exciting hands-on team experience where they learn about the pathways to a rewarding career in manufacturing. These students work for an entire year with an industry advisor to guide them through their design and manufacturing process. A special thanks goes out to DMI companies of uh, Nongahela, who was their primary contact. It's also important to note that some of the students that were mentioned are graduating and heading off to college to major in engineering. And these are the kind of activities that our school system supports that really help them move in their professional careers. Marion Elementary, Brian Stanford. From Code.org observed and filmed the fifth grade class coding their computer technology class with Mrs. McIntyre. They do a coding project as part of a dance party and they show co showcase their coding and problem solving skills. Uh, at the middle school, John Caracas, Dan Beckley, Jason Scaramucci organized a mobile ag lab to come to BVAMS this week, just a couple weeks ago, and that kicked off a school wide science fair project. Carol Fro, congratulations and thank you for your leadership in the production Emma, which is a pop musical. And also to a host of teachers from Bell Vernon Middle School who hosted tons of clubs. And I know this happens at a lot of the schools, um, but some of them dealt with STEM, with art, with um, yearbook, newspaper, ping pong, physical education. Uh, thanks to those teachers for giving that extra time. Rochester Elementary, Carol Horrell, a sixth grade gifted teacher, completed the Hazelwood Green Restoration Architecture Competition through Pittsburgh History and Landmarks Foundation at Manesson High School, and they were awarded uh, the following excellence awards. Jack Moffitt for most enthusiastic presentation, Maria Spedaleri and Wyatt Lucas for most creative use of converting the turntable into a planetarium, Grace West, Dominique Salaski, Maggie Grisnick, and Natalie Palanchar for best interior design. The last two, Jennifer Barkey, Scott Kennel, on April 11, 2019, the students at Rochester Elementary participated 
in the first ever, first ever STEM showcase. Uh, it's an evening event designed to spark students' interest in science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and was open to students in grades K to 6. And finally, uh, special thanks to the Nagy family um, from the nature, who donated kindly modeling class for the Nature's Pathway Taxidermy. Uh, the students are using that to prepare for a field trip to the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. The students also read novels, wrote about dinosaurs, and used the clay to mold their dinosaurs as a souvenir. So all of those people that I mentioned, congratulations, thank you. And there are a ton more that I don't have time to mention, uh, but they also deserve our accolades. At uh, this time, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some announcements to make. Uh, first of all, to inform the public, we did meet in executive session this evening from 6 until just a little bit after 7, which is why we're a little bit late getting here uh, to discuss personnel issues. We also had an executive session on Tuesday, May 7th at 6 p.m. for personnel discussion, followed by a tour of the Ross River Middle School building. Another executive session was held on Tuesday, May 14th. Uh, following the work session agenda meeting to discuss student per discipline and personnel. And there will be a special meeting to pass the preliminary budget on Thursday, May 23rd, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the administration offices, 270 Crest Avenue, Bell Vernon. Do I have any comments from board and or administration at this time? All right, if I have no comments from board or administration, this will open the Comments from the citizens, and this is an open comment session. Again, ground rules are this. We ask you to come up, identify yourselves clearly so that uh, Mrs. Konka can hear and, and take down the notes. And we are limiting you to three minutes, and you can only speak once. Does everybody understand the ground rules? Okay, at that time. I'm going to do like I always do. I'll start over here. So if you're interested in speaking, raise your hand. Jody Winway, Ross Draper. I'm sorry, but Michelle, I'm going to point at you. Because this whole thing needs home to me. I've already told a couple board members. When this was all going on, my daughter was on the way there. I had a niece. I have family members at Shaw Ray. When I was in fourth grade, Michelle, I lost my dad to drink in a drive over there on 70, right by the golf course. And to see all these pictures and these girls think it's a joke, it's not a joke. I got married almost eight years ago. I didn't have my dad walking me down that aisle. Think about how these girls are making a joke and teach them it's not a joke and be serious. At Belvernon School District, I hope you win your appeal because this is no joke. I'm going to continue, Mr. Havel. Obviously, tomorrow's elections. We have a lot going on. We've not been able to spend as much time as we need to. So we've done special meetings for budget. We did it last year when I was here. In fact, we didn't approve until the last day of the month last year. Um, so this gives us a little more time to look at that. 
Yes. So one of the reasons you're delaying the release of the budget is because of the election. I think that we needed more time, and I do think that doing it the night before the election is is maybe not the best idea. And that was my call. I'm the one who suggested we move it. And that was uh, also, everybody. Also, Mr. Habel, we have three brand new members who were just recently appointed, and Dr. Dow has willingly set up individual meetings with them and with uh, Mr. Deritza, if needed, to go over the budget procedure and to help explain it to them. You know, we want to do our due diligence when it comes to the budget. It's very important. And with everything else that's been going on, we felt it would be best to postpone it until we can concentrate on the budget and the budget alone. So there has been no meetings about the budget oh, so far this year? We've had, you've, you've been there when, when Mr. Dritz has presented stuff, but as, as, well you haven't, well we have had them in workshop sessions and so forth, but the, the bottom line is it's a preliminary budget. It is not the final budget. Preliminary budgets always end up getting amended. We have to pass a preliminary budget by the end of this month, by May 31st. And, and if I remember correctly, last year we did it on the 31st of May because we couldn't get a consensus to vote for it the first time. We had it at the regular monthly meeting. We couldn't, we couldn't pass it at that point. You know? John, may I, if I may answer from a, a, one of the school board members that were recently appointed. Uh, you know, we were in a workshop session last uh, week and when Dr. Dow recommended and, you know, basically the entire collective board agreed on moving the meeting because we needed to make sure that we were clear on all the assumptions being incorporated in the budget, which included but not limited to mainly three different items. Number one, what was the proposed tax increases and what did that mean across all municipalities and counties? Number two, what was incorporated into the budget based on a new bond release? And number three, what was uh, in, uh, incorporated into the budget related to the collective bargaining agreement that's forthcoming with the uh, Belvern Area Education Association. And again, we ask for that. And we have to be careful in these preliminary budget meetings that we don't uh, go to a meeting with more than four members. So again, unfortunately, we had to deal with a lot of uh, disappointing, embarrassing incidents last week that we didn't get to have budget meetings. So that's where we're at. And if we were to come here today, I even uh, emailed the rest of the board that I'd be voting no because I have no idea what the final assumptions in that budget were. So, again, I just want to make sure that I'm clear from my perspective that's why the budget was delayed. All right. Just correct me if I'm wrong, but if the board did meet and discuss the budget as a board in an executive session, that would be a violation of the Sunshine Act, right? Yes, it would. But we did not. We had presentations from. Uh, our business manager as to what numbers were, but no discussion was made. When was that public presentation made? It was in a workshop session. And we've been doing budgets since January. We, we had a preliminary proposal that we put out. We, we've had multiple public meetings talking about the budget. I, I, I don't, maybe I missed that. It's possible well, because... Thursday we will be, it is a public meeting on Thursday. Yeah, and we will be discussing everything and we'll, everything will be out in the open for everybody to see. Can I also can I also say something? This month, basically, when we have workshops, they're always the third Tuesday of the month. So it should be tomorrow, which our workshop should be. Our regular meeting should be next Monday, not this Monday, because of the election, which is tomorrow. They were taking our building, therefore these meetings were moved. And we haven't had the time to really get together with the budget, and as the other ones have said also. Uh, in the last two or three years that I've been on the board, I don't think there has been one that has gone probably before May the 30th or May the 29th to have it voted on because of ties and because of uh, uh, negating the uh, preliminary budget. So, as it stands right now, you don't know whether the tax increase, decrease, or staying the same because you've not been presented with that information. We've been presenting scenarios, so that the board has seen different options. What that vote will come down to, I can't answer that. But they have been presented with different scenarios. At public meetings. At public meetings. They've also been given information on, on different things. Sure. So, okay. but there's been no, no vote taken, no anything. All right. And since 
Tanya Joe takes great notes, they'll be somewhere in the agenda setting meetings or what they'll be where the budget is presented publicly. Yes. Okay. So Michelle, to clarify, we are not going to meet in public to discuss no, we are. We're going to make in groups listed for one, <laughs> one of the suggestions was to have small group meetings if people wanted to, less than four. And you heard Amy Zundel, who was here, saying that was an absolutely acceptable because we have people who are at different levels of the budget. So if someone wanted to come in and ask some specific questions and get information prior to going in, we could absolutely do that. There's, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But we could not do that with all nine of us together if it was not public. And, and, but the answer to Michelle's question is we will have a public meeting on Thursday, uh, May, May 23rd at 7 p.m. at the admin building, and that's where the uh, preliminary budget will be discussed. Okay. And, and we, the public, won't be able to know what those questions were that the four people asked because those questions will be asked in secret. No, it won't be in no, secret. No, they're not being you asked in secret. Yeah. John, they're they're not, said you're John, have meeting John before, what so they're... Let, let me explain. Can I explain, please? Sure. It's no different, and, and let me say, when I was a first-year board member, okay. the budget was like Greek to me. Okay. It took a while to finally understand everything, and, and it took extra time and tutoring. And the, the business manager at the time, Eileen Navish, had us come in and she explained things to us, explained how things work. That is not secret meetings. What that is, is educational in the sense that, and that's what is being offered to these new board members, educational, so that they understand what the, it is. You're, you're trying to make something out that's not there. Why, why can not the general public get the same education as the new school board director then? John, let me say this. Once the preliminary budget is passed, if it's passed next Thursday, if there's agreement, and there's public discussion of that budget at that meeting, it is posted and available to the public for 30 days to comment on the budget. And those comments also can be made prior to the final vote on the budget, which comes after 30 days, and I think it coincidentally falls at the same time as our June meeting. But all that and all the different categories are posted and questions can be raised to the board, to the business manager, and to the superintendent during that 30 day required by law posting an interval. Okay. And John, to get back to your point, any question that we personally ask at these less than four meetings for information so we can make an educated uh, decision when we vote on the public, uh, in the public, you're, I, I'd be more than happy to document the questions that I personally ask and the answers I get. So it's not in secret. And I'll give you actually, I'll make a photo copy and give you a copy of every question and answer I get. Thank you. And I can say that when I had my first meetings with, with Eileen Navish, to, when she taught me, it was specifically to explain what each part of the budget was, what it included, what it didn't include, why it had to be put in a certain way. Just like uh, we had Mr. Deritza explain why we had to change the lease set up, how it was put in the budget because of what the auditors told us. So things change year in and year out. It was Greek to me. I didn't understand it. it now I, I understand budgets much better, but it took time. And it took people educating me. And that's all we're trying to do is give our new directors that opportunity. Plus. I want, to, I want to get a chance to look at it as well and think about it and have the opportunity to make an educated decision as to what we need to do rather than just rush the judgment, if that makes sense. It does, I'm just... We're not trying to do anything behind closed doors. We're not trying to hide anything from anybody. For, for the edification of the public, it's a $38 million document with more than three dozen sources of revenue alone. And I've put dozens of hours in it, and JR will tell you that I send individual questions uh, a couple of times a week, a bucket of about this or that, and why, and justify, and tell me, and so forth. And other directors, too, have the same opportunity, and many of themselves avail themselves of that opportunity because it's important. <clears throat> I know it affects every property owner, every business, and a very vitality of our, 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 our school district. There's a lot of time. That is one of the most important things we do with regard to property taxes and how it affects residents and community. Aside from what we do to benefit the students. 
and, and John, my last comment is, believe me, we would have, we would have preferred to be spending our time last week on different matters compared to what we spent our time on. I would I would deeply would have been prefer preferred to be reviewing the budget and asking those specific questions compared to what we spent our time on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I yeah. want, can I also add one thing too? Just please remember that what we are proposing at the end of the month is preliminary. There is still an entire 30 days to make changes, and from my experience last year, we do make changes. We really get down to the nitty gritty. So please understand, it is preliminary. Thank you. All right. Moving along now. Yes. Uh, ben Pilek, Washington Township. Uh, obviously, in light of recent events, there's been some stuff that's happened, so I'm not going to get into. But uh, there was an issue that was kind of uh, related to this that happened in the high school between uh, around probably a month ago that happened. Um, I, I don't know a lot to talk about it, I'm going to. Um, the MIC SAT incident, if you guys remember hearing about this video about the prom disaster, uh, a couple students that were MIC SAT uh, ended up, uh, they put, put together a video that had to do with um, drunk driving and how why not to drive, drive drunk at the prom. Uh, what ended up happening was the students in the video that were in charge of making it brought actual booze to the production of the video, and they ended up um, like actually getting hammered for the video that they were trying to make. Uh, and my question is, it seems like that got swept under the rug when this and the outrage that happened about this shoot, this recent thing. That seemed to be whenever the board started to care about it, and the this obviously sad thing got swept under the rug. I'm sure most people here don't even know about it. So I'm curious to get a comment on why that seems to get to go unnoticed, and the, this most recent thing went crazy. I can answer that. <clears throat> Sorry, I was consulting here. Um, that incident was not a school-sponsored event. We did not ask those students to do that at that time. Yeah. So they took that upon themselves. So it was not school-sponsored. It was for a school project, though, right? It was for, they were doing it for a school project, correct? Yeah, yeah so, but I, I understand that. But the, the fact is that they were, un, were, they felt the need to do this, and there was, seemed to be no serious punishment given to them. A lot of the stuff that happened was not even offered to them. Like, I know, before I even happened this recent thing, I weren't allowed to go to prom, and obviously all this stuff, I don't want to get as much into that, but that was never even put forward to these kids who happened to this. And, and some of these these people were my friends, I'm not trying, I'm not defending them, I'm saying it just seems like that uh, very drinking is an issue that is not attacked enough in, like by our school as a, as a whole. I feel like that it's not taken as seriously as it should. Thank you. John Phillips is over here. <laughs> okay, continuing. Trisha Salaski, Ross River Township. I'm going to read a definition of a school board member that I Googled off on Google. School board members are locally elected public officials entrusted with governing the community's public schools. The role of the school board is to ensure that the school districts are responsive to the values, the beliefs, and the priorities of their communities. With that being said, I would like to ask the question, how a certain board member can still remain on the board when she has active litigation against the board regarding our disciplinary policy? I'm not sure how you can remain there with a clear conscience and think that you can serve this district. You do not need the values of this district, and I honestly do not want you making another decision for my child or any other children in this district. I would ask that you do the right thing for once and resign. Generally, generally speaking, board members are not tied to a decision of a staff or administration. And if a decision is wrong, the board should vote their conscience to correct. Okay, now, moving along. 
Yes, back there. Angel Temeshenko, Ross River Township. Um, in light of everything that's happened, I would just like you all to consider looking into other programs that educate our children on drug and alcohol. Because the attitude of our students that have been displayed is atrocious. It's horrifying how flippant they are, how disrespectful they are, um, how they, they have no regard for authority and have no respect. And the bigger picture is that these students were driving, they were drinking, they could have gotten into a car, they could have killed somebody else, they could have killed themselves. So we as a community are not educating them properly. We are not instilling the values in them that need to be instilled. And maybe we need to take a look at what we're programming to better educate them so that they actually feel remorse because there was no remorse felt. And I can guarantee you that I can guarantee you that if something would have happened to one of those children, the exact same parents that are suing the district would be holding you liable. Yes. Yourself, please. Vivian Slasky, Ross Driver Township. The question I have regarding everything that has gone on this past two weeks in regards to the, the Bell Burn cheerleaders is how it, there are two separate things, issues going on here. There are, is the Relay for Life incident where they were caught underage drinking in Charleroi during a school event. There are also social media pictures that were taken afterwards that represent them as cheerleaders of the community and represent our school district. Why aren't they being handled separately? With that said, our bylaws constitute that you are a representative of Bell Vernon area school district. You should be positive and a good role model and shouldn't be putting F you and a towel with a boy behind you and these pictures showing that you're drinking all over the place everywhere. With that said, I would ask those girls to step down if you guys can't make the decision to remove them from the, the cheer squad. They do, do not deserve to be on that squad, and the right thing to do is for them to step down and for you to remove them. Winwood's comments, and it won't have nearly as much of an impact. But I would like to just say that I'm not angry with these girls. I'm angry at the adults that made them believe that their actions don't have consequences. <laughs> their actions have affected more than themselves. I want to thank you for now letting the actions of others affect us all. I'm angry that the girls haven't humbled themselves after they were given a second chance. They made a mockery of the charity of their, uh, they made a mockery of their charity and their trial and of their district and laughed when their coach resigned. I personally never wanted any of these girls or their parents to be ridiculed or face the harshest of punishments. They're not in my house. All I want is for my own kids to live in a district they can be proud of. We need to stick together and build the reputation of this district back up. We have so much to be proud of. It's a shame that there are people within our district and on this board that continuously work at changing, modifying, and adapting all of the rules to benefit themselves or their children. So I'm asking, can you please tell these girls why the actions of their teammates are now left without a coach, cannot attend Relay for Life, 
may not be able to attend cheer camp, I could keep on going. I'm seriously asking for someone to give the girls that chose to make better choices an answer.
this is ridiculous. It's out of control. I just want to know who's going to protect them in school and at fundraisers. Anybody else? Yes. No. Good evening. Jennifer Metacosh, Cross Traver Township, long term Phil Vernon resident. Sorry. Um, I wrote this, and if you don't mind, I'm going to just read it. Um, our daughter, Mary, will be in ninth grade next year. She tried out and made the varsity cheer and competition squad. She was excited and proud to be a BVA high school cheerleader. As her parents, we were also excited and proud of her accomplishments. She's a Metacosh and a Bell. Both names do not go unblemished. <clears throat> Mike and I, not innocent in our youth or even adulthood, that we are trying our best to guide our kids' moral compasses positively knowing that they will mess up along the way. However, this is our daughter. Her uncle, whom our oldest chat is named after, died at the age of 17 from leukemia. Did not go to the prom. He did not walk at commencement. Youth privilege that was not afforded to him. Our oldest chat cannot participate in a sport that he loves, not because he was day drinking at a cancer fundraiser, but because he injured himself doing something he prided himself on and loved. Perspective needs to be in order. I do not believe that those punishments were extreme. Our kids have to sign a drug and alcohol policy prior to the start of each athletic season, knowing the consequences of their actions if they choose to make the wrong choices. Our kids would not have attended the prom or commencement. They would have sold their formal wear and sent it to the money sent the money to Relay for Life and worked off their fines. I may have taught the 45-day suspension due to the impact it may have on their academic adult futures, but I would have taken that to the school. And considering that every student athlete signs the drug and alcohol policy that gives specific punishments for offenses, our kids would sit out their next season by our word in agreement with the policy. Today we have had a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation with our daughter in regards to the controversy that is surrounding the high school cheerleaders. Is this something that she truly, truly wants to continue to be associated with? We are not passing judgment on any person involved because we have known many of them for a very long time. But we cannot help wanting to protect our daughter from the ramifications that are to come from the recent events. Kids are mean. Imagine our cheerleaders and the welcoming they're going to receive when they travel to other schools to re represent and support our Mighty Leopards. I share this with you to show support for the district's decision to appeal the court's decision and to possibly sway my influence to the parents of these students and their decision to fight for something that they know deep down is not what they should be fighting for. Thank you. got lost in some of this too is we over we are overlooking the 600 and some plus kids who stayed at Charleroi and raised the money for uh, the relay for life I had a sister who died of cancer and to me that was a very very important event the relay for life and, I, and I've done this in my past with her also I, and uh, I just wanted to thank the kids who raised the money and did a fine job at Charleroi Yes, I'd like to make uh, one comment in light of uh, Director Rodriguez-Galloway's uh, definition of a board member. 
I would ask that our solicitor kind of explain to the audience what the formal procedures were after the informal hearing. If the parents of these students were not satisfied or questioned the proposed consequences that the administration. Director Callaway Rodriguez, you said that it's the responsibility of a board member or a board to question the consequences. Unfortunately, we did not get that opportunity and I'll let the solicitors explain it from here how if we would have followed Pennsylvania State Code, how that would have uh, proceeded if the parents would have uh, basically requested a formal hearing in front of the board. Thank you. So what would have taken place after the informal hearing is the school district would have set up formal expulsion hearings for the girls uh, in front of the school board. Uh, that we, we were in the process of scheduling those hearings but prior to them being scheduled and prior to them occurring, the school district was sued and uh, subsequently served with a petition for a preliminary injunction, which basically is a, it's a court filing that, if granted, allows the court to um, provide some interim relief to the, the person who files it while the litigation is going on. So in this case, the interim relief was for the school district to not be able to impose uh, any sort of discipline. The, um, the, the, the school district, again, was in the process of scheduling those formal hearings. Uh, none, of, none of the students involved were ever expelled because, again, it never got to that level. Thank you. Uh, the, point, the point that I'm only trying to make in very plain English is the actions that, that the parents elected to take the, to hire an attorney uh, basically uh, preluded us to have formal hearings and understand any concerns with consequences. So again, you know, it'll be on the record of what uh, Director Kelway Rodriguez said the role of a board member was to question any proposed uh, consequences of the administration. Unfortunately, we weren't even given the opportunity to serve the taxpayers and children. Bola from Straver Township. In order to grant a preliminary injunction, there has to be an underlying complaint filed. Mm -hmm. And so what was the substantive nature of the complaint that the judge rested upon in order to grant preliminarily injunctive relief? Because I understand that there may be a procedural defect with respect to the meeting out of the punishment. But what basis did they have to file suit as against the district? What's, what's set forth in the complaint is that the students were expelled without a formal hearing. Obviously, process. Process. Well, right. So the, the, the school code says, obviously, that you have to have a formal hearing uh, prior to expelling students. Now, that's assuming that those students don't enter into some sort of agreement with the school where the parents would agree with the discipline and say, okay, we agree with that. We're not going to need a formal hearing because we're all on the same page. Um, but the nature of the complaint uh, says that the students were expelled without that hearing. Okay, so essentially, as long as you guys provide them with procedural due process, you still have the right to sanction those individuals at the end of the day. Yes. So there's no lack of a penalty here. It's a question of whether or not that delayed penalty may or may not occur based on the facts and the evidence as everyone is entitled to under procedural due process. Correct. Well, that, the, the nature of a preliminary injunction is it's, it's, it's an emergency injunction. So whenever those the complaints filed, the emergency injunctions filed, and it's typically, you, you can get in front of a judge on those fairly quickly, especially in a, a smaller location. Were they required to bond that, or was that uh, exempt from bonding? No, it's exempt. I... Uh would like to say that uh, I appreciate your attendance and your comments tonight. Uh, we're doing what we can. We have to, of course, follow what the courts, both at the Commonwealth level and the county level, dictate to us. But we'll also ask if they don't do what we hope they'll do, what remedies may be available to us otherwise. But let me say that I appreciate your comments, and I think I speak for most uh, of us when I say just three words, we hear you.
I will echo that. Uh, we appreciate your comments, but we hope you will understand that we cannot comment. And that's why we have sat here. And I know some of you are upset that we didn't say anything, but we cannot. So, so that's where it stands. At this time, just to let everybody know, we will not, oh, do I have to actually adjourn? Yes, adjourn. We're going to adjourn, then we are going to be going into executive session because we have we have personnel issues that we have to deal with. So at that point, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Director Angstrom, second by Director Kovach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meetings adjourned. <laughs>